So in this video, we are going to take a look at the regression line, or the line of best fit, and we're going to focus deeply on the R and the R squared. And we have talked about R in several previous videos, so I hope that you've watched those and taken good notes, because the real new concept in this video is going to be working with R squared. But let's review a little bit. So we have this data. We have typed it into our calculator. It's here in the stat, enter. It's in list one, list two. Then we click the stat button and we move over to the test menu and scroll to linear regression t-test. Now we've been focusing a lot on the A and the B in the previous video and getting this line of best fit here. But if you scroll down all the way to the bottom, you'll notice that there is an R and an R squared value. I wish these were flip-flopped. I think we use the R more than the R squared, but we will be using both in this chapter. So we call R the correlation coefficient. The correlation coefficient. Your book will be using those words and so will your online homework. If we're talking casually in class, we're going to talk about R. The correlation coefficient, that numerical, its purpose is to show a numerical strength or weakness between x and y. So we're going to have a num R value and the R value could be all the way down to negative 1 and all the way up to positive 1. The closer the R value is to negative 1 and positive 1, the stronger it is. If the R value is close to 0, well, that's not a very strong correlation. Now let's take a look at what we had for our R value. Our R value was 0.981. So I'm just going to round to two decimals here. 0.98. So is that close to 1? It is very close to 1. So we are going to do some casual talk about this here. There is a 98% correlation between... Now, the X and the Y is the cars and the revenue, so we're not even going to even dive deep into the units here that we did in the previous, um, in the previous uh, video. So we can just say there's a 98% correlation between the number of cars and the revenue in dollars. Uh-huh. So that is a, it feels like a very strong correlation and that's true. Now what we're going to do in the next section, so we're going to do in section, uh, our next uh, section of the chapter that we're in, is we're going to spend time evaluating if 98% is weak or strong. I mean I can tell you it's strong, but you know we're going to have some less robust R values in the next unit. So as we do our hypothesis testing with R, we're going to be seeing which is weak and strong. So we're going to also do that based off a chart. So at the uh, in, in two videos, we're going to need you to, to download a chart from my Moodle page. Okay, so now taking a little break, we have just done the R. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the R squared. The R squared is not the correlation coefficient. It is the coefficient of determination. Please don't get these two mixed up because the book is not going to usually call them R and R squared or the XYZ homework is not going to say, okay, give me R squared. It's going to ask you for the coefficient of determination. So you can see that on the calculator. If I click to the calculator, here we have our coefficient of determination at 0.96. Okay, so what is its purpose? Okay, now this is gonna be a little bit longer of a sentence and it has a pattern to it, so let's look out for that. The purpose of the coefficient of determination is to show how much 
the percent of variation in y is explained by the percent of variation in x. Okay, now what's cool is that you can see that I used very loose words like y and x so you can kind of plug in your units um, and you can see that this word explained is going to be very important. There's going to be explained, but we're also going to tag in an unexplained amount. So what I'm going to do is show you how I can just use this format of how the sentence is written and show you how to write it down. Okay, so here you are, you're doing your homework, and it says the R squared, or you find it on the calculator to be 0.96. And then the um, paper pencil homework or the test or the the online homework asks you to explain what does that 0.96 represent what is it telling you in the context of the problem well we have a 96 percent coefficient of determination so we can say that 96 percent of the variation in revenue okay you see how I've basically taken what I've written in blue here and adapted my units for the Y so 96% of the variation in revenue is explained by the variation in number of cars bought. All right, now that sentence really kind of puts it all together. 96% of the variation in revenue is explained by the variation of number of cars bought, which means that there's a high, um, and I don't want to use this word very lightly, this word that you may want to use is causation. Be very careful of that. Correlation is not causation. But this is the closest thing we can get to it. <laughs> all right. This is saying like, okay, the variation in revenue, practically all of it, is explained by the number of cars bought. You can't make more money if you don't buy more cars. Now, I do want to add one more sentence to this, and I would like to see this in all of your examples here. I do want you to take the complement of 96% and get that answer, so that would be 4%, and just write down these two words after it. 4% is unexplained, okay? But in the real world, that unexplained 4% is probably other factors, such as the economy or the marketplace or how the business is run. There's lots of different factors that can go into what is unexplained, but there's really not much of it there. So you may think to yourself, well, shoot, I'm going to buy all the cars. And there are some dangers to that, as we will see in our very last unit with the standard error of estimate. But that is how we do the coefficient of determination. You get your R squared value, you follow the format of seeing how much the percent of variation in Y is explained by the variation in X, and then take your complement for the unexplained, really short sentence there. Now, it is true if you don't have the linear regression t-test, you can easily find R squared from R by squaring it. Okay, so which means you can take your point 98, you can square that, and that will give you the approximate point 96. Obviously, the more decimals you use, the better, but there is a danger in doing this. If you have a negative, if you have a negative R, use parentheses. Okay, this is very important because what if your XYZ homework says, okay, imagine that your R value is 0.72. If you have a correlation coefficient of 0.72, find 
the coefficient of determination. Well, all you need to do is square it and say, haha, I got it. There's my coefficient of determination. You can even start with a coefficient of determination. Let's say your coefficient of determination is 0.34. Well, to get to my um, R value, I would just need to take the square root of this. So by taking the square root of 0.34, and getting rid of that other stuff on the outside here. If this was my coefficient of determination, taking the square root would find my um, R value or correlation coefficient. Now, here's where the warning really hits home. If you have a negative R value, let's say you have a negative 0.52, let's say that's your R value, that's your correlation coefficient, and you want to square that, to get your coefficient of determination. You must use parentheses because just putting a square on the outside will give you the wrong answer. And the reason why that's the wrong answer, the answer is not negative. Because if you use parentheses, you will then get the negative 0.52 times the negative 0.52. This is your correct answer. Because when you square something on the calculator, the calculator will not think that the negative in this example here is part of the thing you wanted square. Like if you want negative 5 times negative 5, the calculator thought you just wanted negative 5 times 5, which is negative 25. So always use parentheses when squaring a negative number on the graphing calculator, because according to order of operations, you need to have the parentheses around that to get the negative in there. And I know you've had this in your previous algebra class, but you probably haven't heard of it in quite a while. So as a reminder, if they say, okay, your R value or correlation coefficient is negative 0.95, be sure to put the parentheses in the negative 0.95 and then square it. I forgot to put my negative in, haha. -ha. So make sure you put your uh, negative 0.95, oh, I'm really messing this up here, and that will give you the positive core, uh, coefficient of determination to get your correct answer. All right, thank you for watching, and look out for those negative R values.